This in itself is one of the reasons why we are presenting this material to you. You are entering a whole new set of circumstances that require the cultivation of your inherent abilities as well as the learning of new skills. Though humanity represents a unique situation, emergence into the greater community has happened countless times before with other races. Therefore, what is being perpetrated upon you has been done before. It has been highly developed and is now being adapted to your life and to your situation with what we feel is relative ease. The pacification program that is being implemented by the visitors is making this possible, in part, the natural inclination towards peaceful relations and the desire to avoid war and conflict are admirable, but can and indeed are being used against you. Even your most noble impulses can be used for other purposes. You have seen this in your own history, in your own nature, and in your own societies. Peace can only be established upon a firm foundation of wisdom, cooperation and true ability. Humanity has naturally been concerned with establishing peaceful relations amongst its own tribes and nations. Now, however, it has a greater set of problems and challenges. We view these as opportunities for your development, for it will only be the challenge of emerging into the greater community that will unite the world and give you the foundation for this unity to be genuine, strong, and effective. Therefore, we come not to criticize your religious institutions, or your most fundamental impulses and values, but to illustrate how they are being used against you by those alien races who are intervening in your world. And, if it is within our power, we wish to encourage the right employment of your gifts, and your accomplishments for the preservation of your world, your freedom and your integrity as a race within a greater community context. The visitors are fundamentally practical in their approach. This is both a strength and a weakness. As we have observed them, both here and elsewhere, we see that it is difficult for them to deviate from their plans. They are not well adapted to change, nor can they deal with complexity very effectively. Therefore, they carry out their plan in an almost careless manner, for they feel that they are in the right, and that they have the advantage. They do not believe that humanity will mount resistance against them, at least not resistance, that will affect them greatly and they feel that their secrets and their gender are well preserved and are beyond human comprehension. In this light, our activity in presenting this material to you makes us their enemies, certainly in their sight. In our sight, however, we are merely attempting to counter their influence and to give you the understanding that you need and the perspective that you must rely upon to preserve your freedom as a race and to deal with the realities of the greater community. Due to the practical nature of their approach, they wish to accomplish their goals with the greatest efficiency possible. They wish to unite humanity, but only in accordance with their own participation and activities in the world. To them, human unity is a practical concern. They do not value diversity in cultures. They certainly do not value it within their own cultures. Therefore, they will attempt to eradicate it or minimize it, if possible, wherever they are exerting their influence. In our previous discourse, we talked about the visitors' influence on new forms of spirituality, on new ideas, and new expressions of human divinity and human nature that are in your world at this time. In our discussion now, we would like to focus on the traditional values and institutions that your visitors seek to influence and are influencing today. Seeking uniformity and conformity, the visitors will rely on those institutions and those values that they feel are the most stable and practical for their use. They are not interested in your ideas, and they are not interested in your values, except insofar as these things might further their agenda. Do not deceive yourself in thinking that they are drawn to your spirituality, because they lack such things themselves. This would be a foolish, and perhaps fatal mistake. Do not think that they are enamored with your life, and with those things that you find to be intriguing. For only in rare cases, will you be able to influence them in this way? All natural curiosity has been bred out of them, and very little remains. There is, in fact, very little of what you would call spirit, or what we would call van or the way of insight. They are controlled and controlling, and follow patterns of thinking and behavior, that are firmly established and strictly reinforced. They might seem to empathize with your ideas, but it is only to gain your allegiance. In traditional religious institutions in your world, they will seek to utilize those values and those fundamental beliefs that can serve in the future to bring you into allegiance to them. 
let us give you some examples, born both of our own observations, and of the insight that the unseen ones have given us over time. Much of your world follows the Christian faith. We think this is admirable, though it is certainly not the only approach to the fundamental questions of spiritual identity and purpose in life. The visitors will utilize the fundamental idea of allegiance to your single leader, in order to generate allegiance to their cause. Within the context of this religion, the identification with Jesus the Christ will be greatly utilized. The hope and the promise of his return to the world offers your visitors a perfect opportunity, particularly at this turning point in the millennium. It is our understanding that the true Jesus will not return to the world, for he is working in concert with the unseen ones and serves humanity and other races as well. The one who will come claiming his name will come from the greater community. He will be one who is born and bred for this purpose by the collectives that are in the world today. He will appear human and will have significant abilities compared to what you can accomplish at this moment. He will seem completely altruistic. He will be able to perform acts that will engender either fear or great reverence. He will be able to project images of angels, demons or whatever his superiors wish to expose you to. He will seem to have spiritual powers. Yet he will come from the greater community, and he will be part of the collective. And he will engender allegiance to follow him. Eventually, for those who cannot follow him, he will encourage their alienation or their destruction. The visitors do not care how many of your people are destroyed so long as they have a primary allegiance amongst the majority. Therefore, the visitors will focus on those fundamental ideas that give them this authority and influence. A second coming, then, is being prepared by your visitors. The evidence of this, we understand, is already in the world. People do not realize the presence of the visitors or the nature of reality in the greater community, and so they will naturally accept their prior beliefs without question, feeling that the time has come for the great return of their Savior and their teacher. But he who will come, will not come from the heavenly host, he will not represent knowledge or the unseen ones, and he will not represent the Creator or the Creator's will. We have seen this plan in formulation in the world. We have also seen similar plans carried out in other worlds. In other religious traditions, uniformity will be encouraged by the visitors, what you might call a fundamental kind of religion based upon the past, based upon allegiance to authority and based upon conformity to the institution. This serves the visitors. They are not interested in the ideology and values of your religious traditions, only in their usefulness. The more that people can think alike, act alike and respond in predictable ways, the more useful they are to the collectives. This conformity is being promoted in many different traditions. The intent here is not to make them all the same, but to have them be simple within themselves. In one part of the world, one particular religious ideology will prevail. In a different part of the world, a different religious ideology will prevail. This is entirely useful to your visitors, for they do not care if there is more than one religion, so long as there is order, conformity and allegiance. Having no religion of their own, that you could possibly follow or identify with, they will use yours to engender their own values. For they value only total allegiance to their cause, and to the collectives, and seek your total allegiance to participate with them in ways that they prescribe. They will assure you, that this will create peace and redemption in the world, and the return of whatever religious image or personage is considered of the greatest value here. 